had a father drill. Next, altitude reached. It doesn't feel like we're meant to be here. Why am I here? Can't. Oh, yeah. Ready? Right. You ready? Finishing touch. You ready? Go, film, film. Si beau et si fragile. L'artiste américain David Popa s'est lancé un défi de taille. Dessiner des visages sur d'immenses fragments de glace flottants. C'est dans le golfe de Finlande que ces œuvres complexes ont été réalisées. Ce n'est pas de la peinture mais du charbon de bois qui a été utilisé pour dessiner ces portraits. Des conditions extrêmes et un résultat éphémère à couper le souffle. I guess it really wasn't all that planned. I've been living in southern Finland and went to the ice one day and noticed how these ice flues were fracturing. And I ended up doing an entire series on the ice. A glacier with its deep crevasses and seracs just had to be next. JP. Hey, how's it going? I pick up the phone. Do you realize there are glaciers in Norway? I'm sorry, what? I was just on Google Maps. I'm just wandering around and all of a sudden, I'm hitting a glacier. Mm, Norway. I hear the word Norway and I know it's gonna, it's gonna be a crazy trip. I had this dream to sort of revamp a van, hook it up so that you can sleep in it, and uh, sort of had this idea of creating this expeditionary vehicle. And to take it with me on this, on this trip. start making our way uh, through Sweden and then deeper into uh, Lappish Norway. I'm just ready for the adventure. It's the first time that will officially be some form of expedition and by that I guess I mean that we will be in a remote location in which um, we'll be camping out for multiple days. We start getting into these mountains in Norway and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was moved in a way I couldn't express even before we get to this site that he's after. So I can just, I'm just stirring. I've been to Norway three times before, but every time it is just a whole nother experience. And there's so much you know, content nowadays, there's just so many photographers, videographers, you're just seeing so many of these incredible locations, but to, to be there and see it in person it just does something to you. And so we pull in and we're just so excited. We just want to get started. All right, so we were thinking of just going straight to the location. I think it's a bit sketchy. We don't have a map. We don't know where to park our car. So we figured we slept here for the night, this tourist center. It was locked when we came. Let's see if there's anyone there. Like there were just 
some of the most basic things that I just completely missed. I don't know. It's a bit sketchy. I'm, I'm excited about going, but we just know so little about the area. I don't even know how to get to the glacier. It's, I'm, I'm pissed. It's dis <clears throat> disappointing. We don't really know where we're going. It's totally fine. Are you recording right now? And so we rolled to the nearest tourist station, which was the place we slept the night before, but there was no one there. And so we left and we ended up coming back. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Um, looking to potentially go on the glacier nearby. If, yep. I don't know, if you sell any maps or anything. We see this sort of jolly looking fellow who I didn't know if he worked there or not. And uh, can we can we get buy a map? Uh, we want to go to the glacier and his his eyes just light up and he said you want to go to the glacier we're like yeah you have a do you know how to get there the, this glacier is it's quite flat flat it's, flat, it's, right. it's, it's okay going up the, the valley here yeah and all, all the rocks and, and the, the area around it's like the it's moon amazing. right you, you can see the glacier has been there several years ago wow but now it's like the moon landscape Whoa. and when you come to the glacier it's like wow oh, I, I love the name because it, it encapsulated so much of his personality. He was a bit like a bear. The glacier comes down to the lake, and I think it's about 20, 30 meters high. Really? That's like uh, in, uh, from the Arctic. That's from the Arctic. Yeah, okay, yeah. And so it, that's, okay, we got That's it. really amazing. Okay. And this guy is just beaming at this point. And, and that obviously gets us excited. We're excited that he's excited. You know, we wanted to go to a glacier for the past decade. Do people ever like just pull out their tents and... They do. Yeah. But I have this amazing cabin for you. You can borrow my cabin up there. Are you serious? He basically tells us that we can stay in his hunting cabin. I just can't fantastic. believe we're having be this fantastic. conversation. And, uh... and it's even better. It was this absolutely unreal experience. For you to, to, to stay in the cabin, of course. Oh, it's way better for us. I mean, we were we were planning on being out there for potentially four days inside four the days. tent. Uh, in tent and, and the night temperature would <laughs> be two, two the, degrees. The, the wind. Yeah, it's, it, it, we, we were. So all of these things started to fall into place. I cannot believe that just happened. And I just felt like I was a character in a video game. And he was the next checkpoint. So we embark on this trip and and checkpoint number one is to find this small hunting cabin which was built in the 1930s. We soon realized that first this is going to be way more difficult than we thought because of the amount of things we were carrying and my bag was weighing well over 100 pounds. And so like the first 20 seconds was difficult and I was like oh boy we are in for, uh, for a treat and it starts raining. But all that seems to sort of fade away. I didn't know what I was getting into, but as I start seeing this, this totally foreign landscape just radiating out before me, as the road just winds its way up and down and through and through these mountains, um, I, anyone who knows me would be shocked to hear that I was speechless. Then you enter into, into a whole nother world, into a whole nother space. Which is, of course, what I've been wanting. But you don't realize it until you're there, and until you're in the presence of, of the beauty of, of the mountains. And yeah, I have my goals. I want to do a work of art. Something so much more mysterious starts to, starts to unfold. My, my ancestors were Sami people from Sweden. Really? They used to come this way, going down to Fauska. Well, in the, in the winter time, they had the reindeer stone by the, the sea, in the area around Fauska. And they had to go through these mountains. So every time I come up the mountain, I feel it. Whoa, deeper than you get. It's like, wow. Oh my gosh, right on the horizon like that. And 
so it was a hard, it was hard first day. We arrived late into the night to this cabin, and we were so pumped. Thank you, Mr. Promise Good work. Yeah, Bjorn literally saved us. Oh, it's gotta be this. Come on, Bjorn. <laughs> be with us now. <laughs> In the middle of the night, trekking through the waterfalls. Where are we? In the region. Mountain. really windy today. Really foggy. In my head right now, given this weather is so wet, I just feel like anything that could come out of this project would be a miracle. In the moment, right now, in my head, it just all feels impossible, especially given this weather. Oh my gosh. As we came over that final ridge and started to see it from a distance. Oh my gosh. When I first saw this glacier, the amount of snow and ice just like towering over the water, I just, whoa. I wanted to capture David's reaction, but it was so hard not to just let something out. I think I whispered, oh my goodness. The glacier felt so foreign against the landscape, like this, this sort of colossal sleeping beast. And you better tread lightly, especially at the foot of the glacier. has a presence to it. Ominous, perhaps. Brutish. Primordial. I could feel it breathe. I could feel it move. It was alive. We kept saying to each other, it doesn't feel like we're meant to be here. Why, why am I here? Look at that. And so one of the first things we see are these sort of heaps and piles of, it almost looked like at first, um, just like reindeer dung. I thought it was just a crap from the reindeer. And we come closer and we realize it's this deep black sediment that's, I had read before that it, that it basically gathers on the glacier because of the friction, because of the way it moves down the slope of the mountain. And I, you know, grab a clump, clump of this. And up to that point, I was also very nervous and didn't know if it was even possible to create on the glacier. Because of my work in the past, I know that if, the ice is even remotely wet. The pigment will not stay, it will just sort of roll off. But this is, this is, this is the same, this is what you could expect it to behave like. If you 
had this and you were making some marks on the ice. This, this is exact. I don't have any pigments moving right now, but this is perfect. I get to kind of experiment and see what, because I know already it's very difficult to do on wet ice, but it's not impossible. But that moment I got that pigment in my hands, which was literally sitting there waiting as if it was this invitation. I've been waiting for you. What are you gonna create? And so that day was was great. We stayed generally on one side of the glacier, took a lot of photos and videos, uh, which I had to be very careful about how much I use my battery. Because we're remote, I only have a certain amount of power banks and external uh, power sources. And so I had to be careful how much I'm using of my battery, but um, but it's necessary to scout the location. And so we head back well into the night, got lost, and almost every night coming back, we got lost <laughs> somehow, <laughs> but always end up finding the, uh, the cabin next to the, uh, next to the lake. We were wet and cold the entire time, uh, but thanks to Bjorn, we had the cabin, and we kept drying our clothes, and we kept pushing forward. And so the next morning, now I'm really not sure what it is that wants to be revealed on the glacier. It looked like there was going to be rain happening that night. So the piece has to be pulled off that day. And that morning, I had no idea what I'm going to create. I don't know if it's just a something with my personality or even with JP or maybe guys in general. Uh, I don't know, but we don't quite have the space and time to be able to understand what is ruminating under underneath it all. We don't really have space and time to share things that are going on in our lives, things that have happened in the past. And I sort of had this one word in my mind, which was adrift. And I just started to reflect on how so many of us are adrift. I guess each one of us in our own ways. And if you're adrift for long enough, eventually you'll get swallowed. And you just pray that somebody might find you. and that you'll still be alive when they find you. When we got to the glacier, I thought for sure I had an idea where the piece was gonna be. And so I flew the drone up once, I flew the drone up twice, I flew the drone up three times, and it just, none of the places were clicking. It just, just, it wasn't working. It wasn't working. The time was ticking. I'm wasting so much battery. I just, I'm not liking it. I'm not liking any of it. Sunset was around 7.30. It was three o'clock. Yeah, this is the wrong place. I would have had around four hours to do the piece. I've come all this way for. And I and I and I, and I look in the distance. And of course I had seen it before. We were on the glacier, but there was just this other part of the glacier. It just felt like it was calling me. Let's pack up. We're heading over there. This is the spot, or is it? Or is it over there? I gotta follow the drone. 
And so we quickly head over there. I flew up, fly the drone, and I sort of situate where I want the piece right next to these really, really deep crevasses. And so the next four hours was just this, uh, this state of sort of this euphoric bliss, but also a state of huge pressure. Give it with the brush. I do, can't screw this up. Swivel, spray. Swivel, Swivel spray. We are unearthing out here, baby. This, this madman. I like you better pull this thing off before, before the beast wakes up, or the glacier swallows you. As I'm watching him, the stroke of a brush, the spritz of a sprayer, yeah, the, these things that would just be tools in my hand suddenly becoming an extension of himself, of his soul. And if you're adrift for long enough, eventually you'll get swallowed. Find you. 